Hey guys, uh, Dave again. So we're back with sort of a continuation on the video we made last time, which was the deflation video where it says how you're going to lose your jobs. So this time we're going to focus sort of specifically on Wyoming and what to expect, what to expect, and how it's going to be impacted, sort of over the course of the next ten years or so. And a lot of that's going to be driven by technology and sort of the impact there. And we do these videos just to give you guys some insight on the larger macro things that are going on. Uh, we find these super interesting. Um, hopefully they help you see some sort of what's going on, help you with some of your investing decisions or just your regular whatever decisions. And we hope that when we do ones like this, that it helps you sort of consider before you move to Wyoming, assuming you don't live here. We have a lot of people that don't live here. We have a lot of people that do live here and we have a lot of people that don't. But for the ones that don't, uh, before you move here, some things to consider. We hope you come. I, I think we need more people in Wyoming. Uh, I know I'll get a bunch of hate mail for that. Uh, but you need more people to grow GDP and to make more money. You just need more consumption to drive in our current economic environment. So we need more people. So come move here. But long story short, um, I think we're going to see some disruptions in the oil industry. And by think, I mean, we already are. So if you take a look at coal, it's been a major sort of power source for a long time to drive electricity. So we're seeing massive declines in that, and rightfully so. Uh, it's highly expensive. So if we take a look at this chart, basically what it says is coal costs $112 per megawatt to make, which is rather expensive when you look at natural gas coming in at $59, or about half, roughly, give or take. And then when you look at solar, which is already down to $36 uh, a megawatt. And the big thing about solar is more power from the sun hits the earth in two hours than we make all year. So not that we could realistically grab all that, but it, it wouldn't take long to surpass that pretty easily. So because of that loss in coal, the state of Wyoming is facing about a $1.3 billion shortfall. Now sales tax revenues were a little higher this year, so that definitely helped. I think they were in the neighborhood of like $300 million, so still about a billion dollar shortfall, give or take. So that drives a lot of things. So that means that we don't have state income tax. That means that we don't have corporate tax. That means that our property taxes are low because we get all these royalties from coal, natural gas, and oil. They call them severance and some other, some other miscellaneous use tax that they have in there. Uh, but it really drives a lot. Wyoming's used it to build a lot of its schools, especially in a super fast type of way. So I don't know how these guys are going to make up these shortfalls. I think they're going to do a lot of cuts and they'll probably tap into the rainy day fund this year. But I don't, I don't see, I don't see these revenues coming back, and I don't know where they're going to make up for them. And I think it's only going to exacerbate and compound more, and you're going to see a massive deceleration. So what you're seeing is a lot of coal plants right now pivot to natural gas because it's the cheapest sort of way to go, especially when you have all those sunk costs into a power plant. But in the future, I don't think that's how things are gonna go. So I know we talk about Tesla a lot. I think it's a super disruptive company. I don't own any shares of Tesla, not investing advice as far as that goes. Um, make your own decision there. But what's happening with Tesla, so not only are they making electric cars and self-driving cars, which we referenced in the other one, how they're gonna disrupt a bunch of injuries, industries, excuse me. Um, when you take a look, with the glass panels, the solar roof panels that they have that look like shingles. So right now it costs you about 33% more to get a solar roof. Now that's gonna come down and that 33% versus a traditional roof. So let's say a traditional roof costs you in the neighborhood of $34,000, about $5 a square foot for asphalt shingles, putting you at eight grand and about 26 grand in solar panels. This is assuming you need a roof and you want solar panels. Yeah. But to give it the equivalent roof in a Tesla roof, runs you about 51 grand. It's like 50 and some change. So it's about 33% higher. So there's two sort of technology rules, if you will. One is Moore's law. So every 18 months, the speed of a computer doubles. So in production, there's one called Swanson's rule. So Swanson's rule says that every doubling of shipped product price drops 20%. So as more and more Tesla roofs come out, we should see those costs start to drop significantly. So if we're looking at 20%, that's 10 grand chopped off the top. So now you're at 40 grand. It's pretty comparative. And the Tesla roofs are, are really attractive if we go ahead and take a look at them. So what I think is gonna happen is you're gonna start to see these solar roofs sort of take hold 
and really spread out, especially as the per watts drop and you get into some different scenarios where they finance the roof and then you're just paying a monthly subscription fee. So I think that's really where it's gonna head. And then what they'll do, so they make this basically battery pack that goes on the side of your house called a Tesla Power Wall. So this thing stores power for all the people out there that are like, oh, solar sucks because what happens when it's cloudy and when it's dark and blue? That's what the power wall starts to solve. So basically, it stores up energy so it can discharge it throughout the night when you need it. There's a company in Canada that makes kinetic flywheels. So they operate in a vacuum and they have magnetic bearings so they don't actually touch so there's no drag coefficient. But basically, you can use a flywheel. They're very large, they're, they spin very fast, but they store up tons of energy. Um, they use them a lot in un uninterruptible power supplies now for like data centers and stuff like that. Um, it's a very cool, different way to do it. I think a Chinese company just bought this Canadian company, the one that I'm thinking of. But so there's some other ways out there that they're working on expanding sort of stored power. And once you get stored power under under control, then it's really off to the races, uh, especially as these solar panels start to drop. And I know there's been a lot of innovation in the last couple of months here in, in solar panels. So what you'll see is everybody will have their own solar array on their roof. They'll have a equivalent of a power wall, whether it's a power wall or not, I don't know. And then they're gonna have electric cars in their driveway. So you're gonna run power off of your roof all day long, storing up all of your batteries. You'll get into the nighttime, and let's say you blow through your power wall, well then you'll pull power from your car, and everything will get recharged in the morning when the sun comes up. And if you go beyond that and you drain all of that, uh, basically I think everybody will be connected house to house to house. So you'll be able to draw from your neighbor and you'll pass power around back and forth. There won't be any centralized power sources anymore. It'll be a complete destruction of what we see now. And if you're into computers, you think back, it's to like when you had mainframes and dumb terminals and then you got PCs and then PCs became powerful and there, there wasn't that centralized core like there was, we're sort of moving back to that now with the cloud, but I digress. But anyway, so that's where I think we'll see things head. So you won't have to support power lines and transmission lines and big centralized stations and all this huge infrastructure cost sunk. Like you, you won't have all that. And that's really bad for Wyoming, like really, really bad for Wyoming. So each oil and natural gas job averaged about $82,000, which is a relatively high paying gig for around here. So, and they estimate it takes about three ancillary jobs to support that one oil and natural gas worker. So you're talking about a huge loss there. I don't, I don't, I don't know where that gets made up. So I think if you're thinking about moving here, you need to be prepared to see an increase in property tax. Uh, we have a sales tax increase on the ballot this year. We're probably looking at corporate income taxes and probably individual income taxes, if not next year in the, in the years right behind it just to make up some of this budget def deficit. So, I mean, you got a $500 million deficit this year just in schools. I don't mean to be doom and gloom on this one, but I want you to be aware of, there's some major shifts going on and it's having major implications in economies everywhere. You know, Wyoming's not as bad off as say like a California or New York or Massachusetts or some of those guys, but we're definitely feeling it here and I think it's gonna get really, really tight and really crazy. So if you come and be ready for that, um, get in early, bring a career, start a business, start a business is the best thing, or invest. Um, you know, we haven't talked at all about what these tax implications are gonna do for entitlements and where that's gonna head and how they're not gonna be able to fund those. You hear Joe Biden already talking about how we need to cut entitlements. I think that message only gets louder if if you're on social security, you might be all right. If you're like me and a lot of my friends and in the same age we are, I don't think it's a realistic thing that you should bank on. I know I don't hear a lot of young, younger people talk about it, but as you get closer to retirement, it starts to become a factor. Uh, I'm investing heavy and I'm investing in dividend yielding income stocks to try to build a large enough portfolio that I can offset any loss from social security. So things you need to think about in your investing strategy and the way that you're moving, if you're gonna invest and then dividend income strategy, you need compounding interest and you need time on your favor. So you need to start kind of right away. And we saw a little bit of that in the $15 an hour video where after five years we really had something and it was sort of really starting to build on itself. You need that kind of time and that kind of momentum to, to get that there. So unless you're gonna win the lottery, which good luck, 
Um, I hope you win. Don't forget me. Uh, I'm available for vacations if you do. Uh, but yeah, so not trying to be doom and gloom. I just want you to be aware that if you're coming to Wyoming, these are some things that you need to think about and need to consider. And yeah, get ready. It's going to be a wild five years. Hopefully you can get in the technology industry.